Now we know that it's Michael Carrick that will take over and then an interim manager until the end of the season. So it's still just temporary replacements after temporary replacements. Um, what do you think is the thinking behind that? Is it just because really and truly after Antonio Conte went to Spurs, the, the pool is very shallow for top managers that can take over? I think that's exactly what it is. You know, it tells that United don't know where they want to go and it shows that they really didn't want to sack Ole because keeping him in charge helps avoid this really difficult decision. So, yes, there aren't any obvious available coaches, but for me, it just smacks of complete chaos and disorganisation. You know, if you appoint a caretaker manager and then you appoint an interim at the end of the season, it's like it's one temporary, you know, fix after another one. It's They've had a month now to look for a replacement. They can't even say, the day that you've sat in the manager, they can't even say they've got an interim lined up. I mean, that says everything. Yes, have a caretaker in charge, but to say they can't even find an interim in a month, what does that tell you? It tells you that the club haven't got a clue, and it's really, really bad for a club of Man United's stature. Now, United are always telling us they're the biggest club in the world, you know, biggest club in the world, great history, etc. If you're the biggest club in the world with a great history and they have got great resources, then go out and prove it. Go out and get a manager from another club pay a compensation and get this dealt with now because end of the season, that's six more months of wasted time. You know, it's, are they going to get in the top four by then? What are they going to do in the Champions League? If you're the biggest club in the world, as you say you are, prove it. Go and get Pochettino from PSG. Go and get Brendan Rodgers from Leicester. Whoever you think, pay the compensation. You know, have wasted so much money on players in the last seven or eight years. So surely the value is getting a manager who can turn things around and pay whatever it takes. Well, you talk about United wasting money on on certain, I suppose, players that they have gotten over the last couple of years. The January transfer window is just around the corner. How do they approach that without any clear plan or leader right now? Yeah, I, I don't see United doing any business in January. I really don't. I think, I mean, maybe that's one reason why they're going to look to appoint an interim manager because an interim won't push for reinforcements. That you know, United have got a good squad. I think. Let, let's be honest, they've got a squad of good players, top players who, who are drastically underperforming. So. A proper coach will come in, hopefully, for United and get those players performing. But, you know, Michael Carrick is part of the old regime, so he isn't the answer because you can't expect Michael Carrick to get an improvement out of the players that he's not been able to manage for the last three years under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. The interim, whoever that is, may get a better, you know, response out of the players, but the players will know instantly that this interim manager is only short-term fix. So, you know, if they don't take him, they don't like him, they can, they'll, he'll be gone in six months. So... An interim for me can't inspire the best out of a group of players because they know that he's, he's a short-term fix. You know, Paul Pogba's contract ends next summer. Is he going to really, you know, try and, and, and bust a gut for an interim coach knowing that he won't be there in the summer? It's ridiculous. United should be looking now to get a permanent manager and do whatever it takes. Well, there were whispers last night of United, I suppose, trying to throw more money to support, to persuade a certain Zinedine Zidane. Any truth to that? No, I, I, listen, the Nilian Zidane has been considered by United. I was told about a month ago they, they considered the option. They considered Antonio Conte, weren't were keen on that. They con considered Zidane, weren't keen on that. Because as, as big a name as Zidane is, his, his coaching record is limited to Real Madrid. And, you know, he's got a very specific kind of link to Real Madrid. He, he, was, he came to the ranks there, worked with the, the, the youth team, and he, he knew the players. And he had this great legendary status at Real Madrid. Is he a guy that can translate that to a different club with a different set of players? Also... You know, people have told, told us that Zidane doesn't speak English. He's no real appetite to work in England. He, his, his idea is maybe to take the France job after Didier Deschamps or maybe PSG. So there's no appetite on either side for it to happen. It could happen because it may be a sense that it's the least worst option out there. United may panic, but I don't see right now Zinedine Zidane as, as having a lot of support with the United Baldwin because if they did, they'd do it now. He's available. So that tells you that they've sat the manager, they've appointed a caretaker, they're looking for an interim, there's a guy out there that's won three Champions Leagues and they haven't appointed him, so that tells you that they're not sold on Zinedine Zidane. Well, I'll give not Zinedine Zidane, then, then who else? Who else is left out there? Well, the one guy that United have wanted for a long time, what, the, the guy they really wanted when Jose Mourinho was sat was Maurizio Pochettino, and at that time, they felt that it was too difficult to get out of Tottenham. Didn't happen. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer did really well and he got the job, but, you know, there's a real kind of admiration for Pochettino at United for many reasons. For You know, he plays good football, he gives young players a chance, and he He's good in the transfer market. He, he kind of he accepts the structure that a modern club runs these days, where the the club technical director will, will will buy the players or identify the players. So Pochettino, in many ways, fits the bill. He makes players better. Obviously, he's at PSG right now, and you know it would take a big compensation battle to get him out there. But I'm told that 
he's not massively happy at PSG. There are issues there that I think all coaches experience at PSG where the club tends to be kind of uh, running in favour of the players, big big name players who are difficult to control, difficult to motivate. He's going to lose Mbappe next summer. So, you know, he's still got a place in London. He's living out of a hotel right now in Paris. So for me, Pochettino is the ideal candidate and maybe why they're waiting until the summer. So watch this space for Pochettino. Beyond that, you know, United are prepared to look for a domestic coach. Brendan Rodgers is a guy that they've got a lot of admiration for. He's not had the best of run recently at Leicester, but, you know, Brendan Rodgers has got a decent track record. But beyond that, people are talking about Eric Ten Hag at Ajax. I'm not sure the time's mm. right for Eric Ten Hag. It's a big step to go from, from the Dutch league to the Premier League. I think we've seen that with some players you know, in recent times, Donny van der Beek being an obvious one. So I think if you're looking for long term, I think you're looking at Pochettino at the top of the list, closely followed by Brendan Rodgers. But, you know, if the interim comes in and does well, they might actually fall back on that and give him a long-term contract again. Who knows? Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.